this is a pair of one of my favorite tennis shoes they are nike air max 97s and i wear them a lot but a lot of times whenever i'm wearing shoes that are not comfortable on my feet i'll change into these or wish i had these somewhere close by so in today's video we're gonna make a shoe bag that you could bring with you maybe on the go or even if you're traveling and you need to put shoes in your suitcase and you don't want to mess up your clothes in your suitcase you could put your shoes in the bag and keep them separate from your clothes so let's get right into making this shoe bag so i wear an eight and a half size shoe so you can make yours whatever size you want to to fit your shoes what i did was i just decided to make it two inches bigger from both ends of having the shoes next to each other and two inches bigger from the top and bottom so for me the shoes that i wear it would be about a 10 by 13 size bag but like i said you can make yours two inches bigger all the way around once you put your shoes side by side you can use my measurements if you wear a size eight and a half even a nine would be fine because there is a lot of room in the final bag so you can add another pair of shoes or you can do a pair of shoes and a pair of flip-flops but the bag will be big enough for you to add at least one pair of like thick tennis shoes and another pair of small thin shoes so i cut two pieces for the outer fabric 10 by 13 and cut two pieces for the inner fabric 10 by 13. And then these strips are going to be for the zipper gusset. So I cut four pieces, three by 22 inches. I had some scraps, so I just used that to make the gusset pieces. So if you have enough fabric to cut 22 inches, then you don't have to do what I did, which was just kind of piece some fabric together. But after cutting the four strips, that's going to go on each side of your zipper and the lining to your zipper. I use zipper by the yard, but if you have a zipper that's longer than 22 inches, you could just use that instead. So now we can work on the front and back panels. So I grabbed the front and back panels, 10 by 13, and I just placed them with the backs, the wrong sides facing. And then I pressed them nice and flat, and then I sewed all the way around all four sides. And then after sewing around all four sides, I just cut off a little bit of the excess from around the seam. I just used about a quarter of an inch seam allowance and then just cut a little bit of that off all the way around. So I did both of the front and back panels the exact same way. Now that that's done, we can put that aside and work on the zipper gusset. So I'm gonna take both of the strips and the zipper. I'm gonna add the zipper pull to the zipper since I use zipper by the yard, but you may have a zipper where the zipper pull is already attached. And we're gonna start working on adding the zipper to the strips. So I sandwiched the zipper in between the top layer and the lining layer, and just faced the two layers right sides facing and clipped them together. And then what I did was I used a zipper foot and sewed those layers together. And then after sewing, I just folded the layers with the wrong sides together and then gave it a good pressing. I sewed across each end of the zipper gusset just to make sure the zipper pull doesn't come off. I cut two more strips for the bottom part of the gusset. And just sandwich those right sides facing with the zipper gusset between and I just clip them together on both ends sandwiching the zipper gusset between both layers I 
And then I just used a quarter of an inch seam allowance to sew across each end. And once I flipped the fabric completely with the right sides out, I sewed across each end where the seam is using about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. and I just sewed around the rough edges of the gusset on both sides. And after marking all the sides to the gusset, I also made sure I marked the center of each side of the main panels as well. And then I just attached the gusset to one of the main panels. I flipped the gusset um, with the inside out and attached it to the main panel, one of the main panels that was facing with the right side up. And so I just used all the markings that I used on each side to have everything centered and meet up correctly. I made small snips around the curves on the corners of the gusset so that way I can spread them out when it came time to pin it to the actual main panel. I also cut a little six inch strip of strap which is going to be the handle to the bag and I just pinned it to the seam on the inside of the gusset. If you have bias tape, you can cover the raw edges on the inside of the bag, or you can just cut a strip of fabric like I do, usually two inches, and I just make sure it's long enough to just go around the whole raw seam of the inside of the bag. And then after clipping all that together, I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around. And then once that's done, I'm going to flip 
the little strip of fabric that I use as the bias tape and just fold it over the raw edge after I clip off the excess from around the bag. And after everything is sewed together nice and neat, I'm going to go ahead and add the other main panel to the other side of the bag. I'm just going to clip it on to the gusset all the way around using the markings that I use to center everything. And I'm going to make sure the other end of the little cotton webbing strap, our handle, I'm going to make sure that's also attached nice and neat to the center of the seam on the gusset. And now it's time for the fun part, you guys. This is my favorite part of making bags, which is turning it inside out and looking at the final product. I can't wait to put my shoes in it. This bag is super cute and I can't wait to throw it in my car and just have an extra pair of shoes wherever I go, just in case I'm wearing some shoes that are uncomfortable. I can have my little travel shoe bag with me on the go at all times. If you want to make it a little bit thicker and have more structure, of course, you can add some interfacing to the fabric. I didn't use it in this bag at all, um, just to make it easy to fold up if I decide not to put any shoes in it and just carry it with me in my purse. It turned out really nice and I can't wait to use this shoe bag. I'm super excited because I definitely needed one. I hope you make one too. And if you have any questions about anything, of course, leave them in the comments below and I'll help you out.